Welcome back to this video series that makes you a pro at using Modash's robust discovery search engine. In this video, we're gonna talk about finding those elusive niche influencers, the ones that seem impossible to find, the chefs, the students, the yoga experts, the ones who are just hiding somewhere out there but are perfect for your brand. All the time, customers come to us looking for those niche influencers. Maybe they're a food delivery app that's looking for foodies on Instagram, or maybe they're a furniture company that wants to work with influencers who only ever talk about lamps. You don't want to be that lamp influencer person. Unfortunately, there's just not that many people out there who are super passionately talking about lamps on social. So what is the mistake that that marketer is making? It's a classic one, forgetting to put themselves in the shoes of their end customer, empathy. Empathizing with your end customer, the final person who's gonna see that content is key to choosing the perfect influencer. Let's talk about that lamp example some more. If we sell fancy, luxurious, artwork-like lamps to wealthy people, we can't just think about creators who talk about lamps. We have to think about the broader categories that lamps sit in. For example, athletes, actors, musical artists, these are three categories we could consider. They have luxurious tastes, they love beautiful things, and people look to them as the taste makers. It isn't about being an expert in lamps, it's about authentically engaging your audience on the relevant subject matter as a broad category. Or you could take a totally different approach. You could focus working with creators who take bespoke photography and fancy architecture or cute little cafes even. The point is, you need to step out of your own shoes and think about who your end customer actually follows on social. How many people do you know that are every day opening their phone to look at someone who only talks about lamps? The answer is zero. It's, it's zero, that you don't know anyone who does that. So now that you've had a second to decide which niches might actually be relevant to you and your brand category, let's talk about how Modash helps at the end of the day, because that's what we're here for, right? Let's say we're an e-commerce company selling picture frames and prints like my friends over at Vossington. We might be looking for influencers who talk about art or painting or maybe even sculptures and photography. The important thing is that their followers could actually be interested and that that influencer could authentically highlight this product. It isn't that they're a picture frame influencer that talks about picture frames on a regular basis. So we have five ways to find them inside of Modash. We have bio, keywords, interests, hashtags, and a bonus one that we'll talk about at the end. That isn't technically a filter. Let's start with the bio. The bio filter is one of my favorites because it means the influencer actually identified that they're interested in this topic enough to put it right at the top of their social profile. For example, we can put the word painter in here and we'll see all the influencers who have the word painter in their bio. The context of using that word is gonna indicate that they are a painter nine times out of 10. Make sure you experiment with the terms that you use. For example, paint might surface different results than a term like painter, though they could both be super relevant. So you want to think about the terms that a human would actually use in their social profile that could be relevant to your topic. It's not always super obvious which terms people will use in their bio, so make sure you use a layering technique where you slowly experiment with different terminology until you find the one that hits. We talked about that more in our other best practices video, so make sure to check those out and go ahead and experiment with the bio filter with phrases, terms, words, emojis, whatever you think might be relevant to the people you wanna work with. So now that we've talked a bunch about empathizing with your user and about using search results as layers to find influencers that speak to your target audience, you're gonna trust that you're gonna use that logic in all my advice going forward. So let's talk about these next three filters with that in mind. So let's talk about the keyword, hashtag, and mention filters. These filters are super powerful and they all work in a very similar way. All you do is input, say the hashtag, hashtag gallery, and you're gonna be matched with all the creators who have used that hashtag. The fact that they're using that tag is a sign that they probably have something to do with galleries or at least that's part of their content in some meaningful way. And in combination with a location and follower filter, this is gonna find you very relevant people. The same goes for the mention and the keyword filters. So if we input a mention like at the rock, we'll see all the influencers who have mentioned the rock in previous posts. This can also be interesting for finding people who've mentioned your brand. Keywords works exactly the same way. If we put I'm a painter in the keyword search string, it's gonna surface results 
of people who have said, I'm a painter in their posts. Keep in mind, you wanna be empathetic and you wanna layer your search filters slowly. Okay, getting into the danger zone here. Next up, we have topics. Topics is a good next resort if you've exhausted the results from those bio, hashtag, and other filters we've discussed so far. So for example, if we put a word like hotel, it might append terms like resort or Airbnb even to that search in different weights based on how people talk about that topic on social. Simple way to think about this is a word cloud with a pillar topic being the keyword that you put in the filter. Finally, there's the interest categories. These are basically our attempt at grouping the topics for you. Keep in mind with interests, you're gonna wanna keep the percentages very low. Treat them like a gentle nudge to get your number of search results down if you have way too many to sift through. You should treat these as kind of a signal of the audience's interest and not the end all be all for your search query. One last thing on interest categories, make sure that you're being really conservative with those percentages. If 10% of an influencer's following is interested in gaming, it's a really good sign that the rest of that following probably has similar interests. People don't necessarily talk about those topics on social enough for us to figure it out, so a small percentage can mean a big passion about that topic. There's another extremely powerful way to find influencers in your niche, and it's the lookalikes. We do a whole video on that in this series and I highly recommend you check it out. But here's the 80-20. If you input the username of an influencer you'd be really happy to work with, you're gonna see more influencers like them in the search results below. To learn more about that feature, check out the video on influencer lookalikes and thank you so much. See you in the next one.